Working backwards is a great technique in maths that helps you in certain situations. I don't really cover maths in much detail in my previous videos. However, considering we just hit 500 subscribers on YouTube and constantly growing as we speak, I knew I had to do something special to celebrate to show that I really appreciate everyone's support. Let's get into it. Work backwards literally means to start with the answers and do the math in reverse order as described in the question. You're essentially plugging in the answers into the problem to see which one makes the math work in the end. The benefits here is really related to increased efficiency, allowing you to answer the questions faster and spend more time on other questions. As you work backwards from the answer, that means it is essentially only effective in certain tests, such as ones that have multiple choice. These tests include the NAPLAN test, the Opportunity Class test here in New South Wales, as well as the Selective Exam and the HAST exam in years 8 to 10. There will also be some opportunities in the thinking skills test that requires working backwards in this method. However, generally it will be for the maths or the mathematical reasoning portion of those exams that I just mentioned. Generally, the tests in school are not multiple choice or provide answers where you can actually choose from. So this technique of working backwards from the answers would not be able to work in those particular circumstances either. So does this work for every multiple choice question then? Well, the answer is no. It's important to know when to actually use the work backwards method and technique, as sometimes it wouldn't be efficient to actually use it. And if you use it incorrectly, it will actually cost marks. There are a few characteristics in common that make working backwards a viable method, and this can be kind of split into two segments. First segment is really related to the numerical answer choices. First, if the answer choices are numbers that are nice numbers, this can actually be potentially useful. This means that the numbers are typically smaller and end in zero. It may also be an even number and end in a multiple of two. A non nice number is one that has long decimals, is not round, and is typically odd. It is also very different compared to the other multiple choice questions. So instead of it being sequential and there's a bit of a pattern and all the numbers are quite close together, like 10, 11, 12, and 13, if this is A, B, C, D kind of thing, instead it's 10, 1000, million, 25 million, and 56 or something like that, then they are not nice numbers and potentially working backwards is not the right technique here. The second Thing you want to keep in mind to see whether this could be a viable technique is the question type. The second factor will let you know whether to use this technique or not and this is when the problem is asking for a single variable whether it be a unit of measurements or will be better compared to something a little bit more complicated where it asks for two different sets of numbers or the difference between two separate sets. If they do not follow the two above factors that I mentioned, it may be worth not using this technique and to instead do it in a more conventional method from top to bottom. Make sure to get practice as this is the only way to know when to use the strategy properly and be instinctually ready to know that this question type may be good to actually use it. In a real test, you will not have the luxury to try the conventional method as well as the working backwards method. You have to choose either or either. So before you actually go into the test, you wanna make sure that if you are familiar with this technique, you are able to apply it. Otherwise, you should just stick with the conventional method, even though it might take you a little bit more time as opposed to the working backwards method. If your exam is in March for the selective exam, for instance, and right now it's mid-November, it may not be a good time to actually learn this technique. However, after the exam in March, you may want to revisit this technique because when you enter year 7, year 8, year 9 and onwards, this technique could be a good to know for those future exams. This is critical because when you are used to the conventional approach from going top to bottom instead of going back to uh, front, then it will take a while for you to get the grasp over it and to know the distinctions between those two techniques and able to apply it effectively, whether it be for the maths or the mathematical reasoning or certain thinking skills questions in the selective exam. 
So now that we know the theory behind it, let's apply this to a practical example to sort of see how you can use it yourself. So this question, I'll make sure to put it on the screen as well so you are across of what the question is actually asking. It says, there are girls and boys in music class writing songs. There are twice as many girls as boys in the class and each girl writes three more songs than each boy. If boys write 24 of the 90 total songs written by the class, how many songs does each boy write? In terms of the multiple choice, it's A is 3, B 4, C 5, D 6, and E 8. Let's start with step number one. And for step number one, it is identifying when we can actually work backwards on this problem or not. We can actually see from this question that the answers or the multiple choice answers are nice numbers. Even though they are not or even numbers, they are still quite small numbers, making it easy to work with. The question also asks for a discrete variable as it is only asking for the number of songs each boy wrote. It also seems like in terms of the numbers, it's sequential so that we know that it potentially could be a viable method here. Step number two is setting up a chart or table and start to solve. In this table, it's already been pre-filled. I've started with either answer B or D in terms of the multiple choice. And on the screen, I will start with B first, but you could either start with a D. So as you can see, um, the songs per boy is four. This would mean the number of boys, if there's 24 songs in total, will be six. The number of girls, which remember, keep in mind that it's twice the number of boys, will be 12. And the songs per girl, which is three more, will be seven. So the total number of songs in terms of calculation does not equal 90, so it cannot be B. We know that 24 plus 84 is more than 90, so the answer can't be B again. We know it has to be a higher number of songs per boy and more than four. So we're now going to try D. Like again, I do the calculations again for D. So 24 plus 72 is still larger than 90, although it is not a lot larger compared to when we tried it for B. As it does not equal 90, it is still not correct. However, it, this gives us a lot of information in terms of what we need to do next. Remember, since this is a video, you can actually stop this if you need to spend more time on the working out or just to get your head around of the steps just because I know that it can be a little bit quick. So feel free to pause it at any time or rewatch it. But now let's get into step number three, which is the process of elimination. As both answers B and D are too large in terms of the total number of songs, answer E must be correct. But if you are just starting out and you're not confident about it, Let's do the math to double check. We can see that for E, if it's eight songs per boy, then it will be uh, three boys, considering there's 24 songs in total. The number of girls will be six, as there's twice the number of boys. Songs per girl will be 11. And if we do the calculation for the total songs, it equals 90. With time though, with practice, you wouldn't even need to do E or the calculations for it because just through the process of elimination, you know that that's the only answer it could very well be. If you have extra time and you just want to double check or you're just starting out, definitely uh, do the working out in this table or whatever table that works best for you. You might also be thinking, why did I go and choose answer B or D first? And why didn't I choose A, C or any of the other answers? Well, that's a great question. And since we do have 500 subscribers, I think I'll go into a little bit more depth and explain it to you guys as well. We can see from the multiple choice answers, it increases by one and it is sequentially set out. So it's A is three and B is four, etc. And it just goes up little by little. If we use probability, we know that if we only had one guess, there would be a 20% chance of getting correct. So if we could only do one guess. However, this is maths and we are relentless in trying to get the question correct. So we're not just going to guess once and do it, otherwise your odds are only 20%. Instead, we're going to be a little bit more calculative and do more than one guess or one working out to make sure that we actually get the right answer. What we're going to do is we're going to do the working out and until we get the right answer. So let's say we chose A instead of B or D. 
as we mentioned in the exam. A is incorrect because it would be too large in terms of the total number of songs and it is too hard to know whether it's B, C, D or E. As they all have a higher total, it is more likely going to result in a minimum of two additional working out or guesses. You might on the next guess be correct, however, statistically, you're not too sure. You know that it can't be smaller, so it has to be larger. And since all the other responses are larger, choosing A doesn't really help you from a probability point of view. Although if we did B or D first, we can be strategic with our following guesses. If we did B and it was too low, the only answer it could be is A, as that would be the only one that would have a higher total number of songs if every boy did three songs. That is why we did D next after B, as that would allow us to instantly know whether it's C or E in terms of the answers without us having to do the calculations, ultimately allowing us to get the answer with just two calculations as opposed to doing up to five if we just chose a random one like A and B and then C. In saying that, when you start working out with, the, with this technique, this will naturally come over time and you understanding when and whether to actually use the working backwards method in the first place. Keep in mind that with the process of elimination, you can actually use this to further make your guesses more strategic and save you more time in the actual exam too. Ultimately, these types of questions can be solved using the working backwards method or even the conventional method or even with basic algebra. Although I did want to show you that most of these questions for the selective exam, for instance, may not even know algebra in the first place in primary school. So it's a good way to actually learn this new technique to answer some of those techniques that require potentially working backwards. With everything, keep in mind that this is only the theory and the principle, but with everything, you need to know how to actually apply this in real questions. Otherwise, there's no point in about it. There's no point in learning peel or rock or any of these other techniques if you are not able to actually use it in practice. So definitely practice with it and you will get better with it. It will show in your results as well. I really, really appreciate uh, all your support. Definitely let me know down in the comments below if you need me to clarify anything that you still had any questions about. If you wanted me to cover a topic that I haven't really covered before, let me know. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe as I'll be doing more videos um, on our journey to a thousand subscribers and definitely like this video as well as that would be really appreciated. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!